the trial of Derek Chauvin transfixed America. All rise for the jury. 25 million people watched when he was found guilty of murdering George Floyd. Now we're learning of a nail-biting drama behind the scenes hidden from the cameras. I've been protecting people for, for 20 plus years. Anybody else who we would know? A lot of people you would know. Professional bodyguard Scott Yell led a cloak and dagger operation to ensure Chauvin stayed alive to face justice that can only now be told. Derek Chauvin wasn't in custody. He was actually holed up here in a top secret location 35 miles from Minneapolis across state lines in Wisconsin. And the job of getting one of America's most hated men from here to the courthouse every day was a logistical nightmare. Yell used a fleet of bulletproof SUVs to prevent any assassination attempt targeting Chauvin. So this is one of the vehicles you used to transport Derek Chauvin. And again, it was more than one vehicle, right? It, it was. was. You had multiple vehicles. Uh, so Every was SUV was equipped with here. a bag like this one. So what's this? This is mace. Oh my so gosh. If we needed to move people back from us, and obviously if we don't want to be victims of it as well, so. Right, gas mask, uh, right? There's masks, there's tourniquets. Um, obviously, COVID was a big thing, so we had COVID masks. Another essential travel so accessory, body Chauvin, armor. When you were traveling with Chauvin, were you all wearing bulletproof vests like this? Yes. No justice, no peace. Protesters laid siege to Chauvin's former home. There were crowds of protesters outside court each day. Just a glimpse of Chauvin could have ignited fury. What kind of dangers did you have to be aware of? People shooting. Um, people throwing, whether it be rocks, bricks, anything they, they could find. We also had to worry about people throwing Molotov cocktails. This was some agitator's Super Bowl. You were getting threats every day. Every day, every single day. And get this, Yell monitored Snapchat's Snap Map feature to keep track of the protesters. What Snapchat does is it actually will create red, kind of like a, a weather map. And it was a very red, high concentration of, of snaps being disseminated out in this particular area. So we knew to stay away. There were also secret safe houses in this suburban neighborhood where Chauvin could be taken in an emergency. It's so top secret, you even tried to confuse us on the way here, driving us here, right? Yes, I did. You took us on sort of a roundabout way, so we're sort of like don't know where we are. Correct. When court wasn't in session, Chauvin actually went on outings and shopping trips with his bodyguard to keep from going stir crazy. Everybody knows what this guy looks like. So what, you'd have him go out in disguises? Yeah. Like what, like fake mustache, a wig? How would you disguise him when he wanted to go out? Baseball caps, sunglasses. Their cover was almost blown when a grocery store delivery person showed up at Chauvin's secret location and rang the doorbell. Except here's the thing, Chauvin didn't make an order. Alarm bells immediately went off. The delivery person did not know that they were going to knock on the door of who could potentially be the most hated man in the world at the time. It turned out to be a delivery for the house next door. Chauvin was smuggled into this parking lot beneath the courthouse each morning, but he was still thought to be in danger, even in court. There was a jury we're gonna take our lunch break at this time. Yelp even refused to let Chauvin eat any of the food provided by court officials. We wanted everybody to make sure that they, 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 they didn't do anything that they would regret, so we just eliminated the lunches altogether and, and, and started bringing them in. So the lunches would come out labeled defense team, jury, prosecution, out of an abundance of caution, you would just throw those lunches out? We did. We just threw they them in the trash. They, well, they didn't accept them. You obviously had a lot of personal interactions with Derek Chauvin. How would you describe him? He is very shy. Um, he is a, a real process oriented, regimented individual. Yell says Chauvin is an almost obsessive compulsive personality, sticking to a set routine. He was very, very methodical in everything that he did. If it was getting out of the vehicle the same way, if it was us opening the door and, and you know, it was just always had to be the same way without fail, no exception. The man leading this military style operation is a mysterious figure and wants to stay that way. Can you tell us if you're former FBI? No. Are you former CIA? No. Are you former Secret Service? No. Nope. Are you former law enforcement? No. Nope. Who trained you? The less people know about me, the better. During those 44 days and nights protecting him, Yell says he saw Chauvin express remorse just once. I said, is there anything that I can do for you? And he said, you can take me back a year. And I will join you in a few